welcome. This is Dr. Kwan, and this is Chapter 4 on Pooling Arrangement and Diversification of Risk. Do you know what is risk pooling? Risk pooling is essential to the concept of insurance. A risk pool is one of the forms of risk management commonly practiced by insurance company. Under the system, insurance company they come together to form a pool which can provide protection to insurance companies against catastrophic risk. Or in other words, they are sharing risk. For example, health insurance, um, everyone would pool their resources together before anyone falls ill. So when somebody fell ill, the care is going to be paid from the pool of money collected earlier. So let's learn more about pooling arrangement. In this chapter, we shall look at how pooling of independent loss exposures reduces risk, how correlation in losses affects the amount of risk that is reduced in pooling arrangement, how pooling arrangement provides the foundation for insurance transactions, and how insurance are efficient managers of pooling arrangements, and we shall discuss other examples of diversification, including stock market. As mentioned earlier, pooling arrangement is one of the basic characteristics of insurance. The basic idea is to replace your loss with the average loss of a group. And the main issues that we are going to examine in this chapter is to find out more about the impact of pooling arrangement um, to expected losses, standard deviation of loss, and maximum probable loss. And on top of that, we are going to talk uh, look at how this result change with more participants and correlation in losses among the participants increases. To better understand what pooling is and what are the impact, let's take a look at some example. Assume there is no pooling arrangement take place yet. In this case, Bob has 20% chance of involving in an accident which results in a loss of $2,500 and 80% chance of no accident. The probability distribution for accident losses is uh, basically summarized in this table. And do note that the distribution is skewed. There is a high probability of zero loss, in this case 80%, and relatively small probability uh, for large losses, uh, in this case would be uh, 20%. So without pooling arrangement, you can find that the expected cost for Bob in this case would be 500. So where you can get the data from the probability distribution that shown earlier. And the standard deviation in this case would be $1,000. How about we have Jane coming to the picture? Let's assume that Bob and Jane have the same probability distribution. We want to examine what will happen if Bob and Jane agree to split evenly on the accident cost in the event of accident. Or in other words, they agree to share the losses, if any, equally. And this kind of arrangement is what we call pooling. And because Bob and Jane are po pooling the resources together, they pay any losses that may arise from potential accidents. When the pooling arrangement takes place, you will probably notice that there would be more than two outcomes. The initial probability distribution only involves two possible outcomes, so it's either no loss or loss. However, when pooling arrangement takes place, you shall see there will be more than two outcomes. Let's take a look at uh, example. Like for instance, both, uh, both Bob and Jane are okay, or pro probably accident happens to Bob but not Jane or vice versa, or could be both of them involved in the accident. The first column of this table lists the possible outcomes for Bob and Jane with pooling. If neither one of them has an accident, then the total accident costs are going to be zero, and each of them uh, just pay nothing. If either of them has an accident, the costs um, are going to be $2,500 and each of them will have to pay uh, $1,250. But if both of them have an accident, then the total cost would be equal to $5,000 and each of them will have to pay $2,500. Now let's find the probability of each of this outcome, uh, which is in the last column of this table. 
Since the losses incurred by Bob are independent of the losses incurred by Jane, the probability that neither of them has an accident is simply the probability that Bob does not have an accident times the probability that Jane does not have an accident. Therefore, the probability of the first outcome is 0 0.8 times 0 0.8, which is equal to 0 0.64. So the same logic applies to the second and third and also fourth outcome. But both has an accident, but Jane does not, so the probability will be computed based on 0 0.2 times 0 0.8, which is equal to 0 0.16, and similarly to uh, for outcome 3. As for the fourth outcome, if both um, Bob and Jane have an accident, then the probability will be equal to 0 0.04. As can be seen clearly from this example, you probably notice that the pooling arrangement changes the probability distribution of accident costs facing each person. The probability that Bob will have accident equals to $2,500 is reduced from 0.2 to only 0.04. This is because in order for Bob to pay $2,500, both Bob and Jane must experience an accident. Given that the accidents are independent, the probability that both Bob and Jane will have an accident is much lower than the probability that only Bob or only Jane will have an accident. Because the pooling arrangement reduces the probabilities of the extreme outcomes, the standard deviation of accident caused by, uh, paid by both Bob and Jane is reduced. If you can recall without pooling, the standard deviation of accident cost in this example was $1,000. But with pooling arrangement, uh, you, you can see that the standard deviation of accident cost declined to 707 So in summary, the pooling arrangement does not change either a person's expected cost, but it reduced the standard deviation of cost. In this case, you can see that uh, the reduction from $1,000 to $707. How about instead of just Bob and Jane, now we have two additional people joining us uh, who are David and also Pauline. With the new addition, now you probably notice that the possible outcome become even more. So definitely it's more than four that we had earlier. This table shows the uh, new probability distribution of accident costs to be paid by uh, among four people with pooling arrangement. The possible outcomes can be all of them had an accident, three out of the four person had an accident, two out of four person had an accident, one out of four person had an accident or none of them had accident. So what's the impact of having more people joining the pooling arrangement? If you can see, the impact on expected losses remain unchanged, similar to uh, the pooling arrangement between Bob and Jane only just now. But probably you notice that Initially, uh, when there is no pooling arrangement take place, the standard deviation used to be 1000. Then when we only have Bob and Jane, the standard deviation reduced to $707. But now with four person, the standard deviation even declined to more to only $500. If you compare to without pooling arrangement, the distribution used to be very skewed. But if we, we have additional four people joining us right now, then you will notice that the distribution now become less skewed. So instead of just one or two or four person, how about we have additional person added to our pooling arrangement? How about 20 person? So let's see what would be the impact of this arrangement with additional participants. Compared to the distribution where risk pooling with four person just now, now with 20 person, you will notice that the distribution is less skewed. In fact, if you take a look closely, the distribution looks very much like a bell curve. In other words, normally distributed. So what's the main takeaway from this example? If you look, notice it does not change the expected loss. And with pooling arrangement, it helped reduce uncertainty of from the calculation or example we saw from the standard deviation reduction or variance decreases. Losses now become more predictable. Or in other words, the distribution become less skewed and more bell curve-like. 
The, um, on top of that, the maximum probable loss also declined, and the distribution of costs become more symmetric and less skewed. Well, the reason why we see this kind of phenomenon is not really uncommon. It is actually based on the law of large number. For those who have learned about statistics or max, probably now you can recall what is law of large number. Basically, the major takeaway is that as n gets larger, the average outcome is likely to get very close to the expected value or the mean. So you can notice that as n get larger, the standard deviation would decline. From the example that we had so far, probably you'll notice that as the number of people in the pooling arrangement becomes very large, the standard deviation approach very close to zero, or you can see uh, the reduction in standard deviation. So this does not happen in surprise. It actually based on the law of large number. And if you can recall, the distribution became less skewed and it does not happen again uh, in surprise. It's actually based on central limit theorem. Based on this theorem, as the number of participants grows, the probability distribution of the average loss becomes more symmetric and bell-shaped, bell um, or in other words, normally distributed. A very important note to take is that not necessarily every time pooling arrangement will reduce uncertainty or you will see the reduction in standard deviation. The arrangement has to be planned accordingly. The previous example, like Bob and Jane, we assumed that they are independent. But how about now we allow correlation? Uh, for instance, maybe Bob and Jane is actually husband and wife, and they are living together, they're traveling in the same car together. So if you notice, the uncertainty would not be able to be uh, reduced as much as what we have discussed earlier. So why? Because what happens to one person happens to other person as well. One person's large loss does not tend to be offset by other small losses. Therefore, pooling does not reduce risk as much if the losses are positively correlated. So the main points about risk pooling is that pooling reduces each participant risk, where you can find that costs from loss exposure become more predictable. And the predictability increases with the number of participants, uh, but decreases with correlation in losses. Although there are many benefits uh, arises from pooling arrangement, but don't forget there are costs as well. So typical example would be distribution cost, um, underwriting, and also loss adjustment expenses or another name, claim settlement expenses. Typical example of distribution costs are uh, involved marketing and distribution expenses, as for underwriting, uh, the example normally is uh, due to screening of applicants and for loss adjustment expenses, example uh, is uh, claims monitoring. Pooling arrangement is one of the basic characteristics of insurance company. So basically, insurance company function as the intermediaries that lower the cost of pooling arrangement by reducing the number of contracts employing people with expertise in marketing, underwriting and claims processing. Insurance company also um, act as a service provider for businesses so they can help uh, in loss control and also processing claims. The result that pooling reduces risk applies to many scenarios uh, apart from just insurance. You can probably see that as part of stock market diversification, um, example like mutual funds or we call that unit trust um, and probably you'll find that in diversification across different lines of businesses within a firm as well. In short, there are different types of insurance. The more people it covers, the more people there are to share the risk and the more people are to share the risk, the cheaper coverage is for everyone. Remove participants and things get riskier and more expensive. That's the end of chapter 4 about pooling arrangement and diversification of risk. Thank you for watching and see you next time.